What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of... Oh, I look a mess. Who gives a shit? Real Housewives um, of Atlanta. I'm tired. <laughs> Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 11, Episode 10, The Wrong Road. Okay. So it starts off with this altercation where Candy and Portia are going at each other, talking about, oh, you always playing a victim, you always getting aggressive and all this stuff. And, you know, Portia calling Candy a bitch and I ain't nobody victim. And then it goes back to one week earlier. Girl, what the fuck is that? One week earlier. And, um, come to find out, this is the night after, or I should say the day after Ty's birthday party. Um, we all saw in the blogs the pictures when, um, Candy threw Ty the Bulls jersey inspired, Michael Jordan inspired, um, you know, birthday party and all that stuff so basically what we have we have the candy factory people sitting there talking about the whole party ty don't know what went on because ty had a great time and for the most part candy don't know what went on either because everybody wasn't over there in that situation that happened and um ty was drunk as shit then you got over there at the dog factory or whatever the hot dog place or whatever you got portia lauren and dennis talking about the whole thing and I'm going to be quite honest, because of the history between um, Portia and Jamie and how they brought Jamie on here, you know, talking about how, ooh, Dennis up here messing around with somebody that I know and all this shit, it felt like a setup, okay? It felt like a setup on Portia's side. Let me just be clear. Both explanations of the story could very much be valid, depending on which one you believe. Both of them could be valid, but I'm leaning more so towards Portia's side, okay? Yes, Dennis could have um, pulled that girl over, but at this point, you know, I feel as though it was a little bit of a setup because why would you bring the girl there knowing that Portia was there? Y'all been talking shit about Portia this whole season. This whole season that all over at Candy Factory, Portia and her relationship has been... In y'all mouths, okay? And why is it conveniently that this girl that supposedly was an ex of Dennis is invited to Ty's birthday party? Was she invited to any other event? We haven't heard no shit like that, okay? So all of a sudden, she's invited. Now y'all trying to make it seem like, you know, Dennis went over there and pulled her and tried to talk to her and all this stuff. And they kick in and then Portia comes over there, get pissed off at them talking, trying to chest bump the girl in the back and all this shit. But then Portia is saying that that's not even what happened, that, you know, the girl came over there to him and he's like, why you over here? Why you here? Why you trying to kiss me and all this shit? Bitches can be messy and niggas can be messy. And that is exactly why I said that both sides, both both stories can be fucking valid. Okay? I just wanted to know why we don't have footage of that night. We got footage of every other thing, but we ain't got footage of that night. Hell, we got footage of uh, Portia beating Jamie ass, but we ain't got footage of this night so we can clarify everything. But when I'm saying Jamie ain't really telling the whole truth, I don't feel like, to be quite honest, I don't think both sides are telling the whole truth. But I'm leaning more so towards Portia's side just because of the whole history of what's been going on on the show with Jamie getting involved and all that stuff. And it's just messy. It's just messy. And like Portia said, I bet you they over there at the candy factory talking shit about me because that's what they've been doing and that's exactly what it is. And then for them to bring up the fact that, oh, well, because Ty said, well, it was an open bar and you know it, um, how Portia gets when she get Hennessy. And at this point, Portia can't even drink because she's pregnant. But they don't know that she's pregnant. So it's like, it's all messy as hell no matter which way you look at it. And it do, and I can understand, even if it wasn't a setup, I can understand totally how it can be made to look like one. That's why I'm leaning more so towards Portia's, uh, you know, story or whatever. Because it's all messy and we already know how them people over there at Candy Factory feel about Portia. Just because um, Candy felt okay enough to bring her and invite her to events or whatever that don't mean that um they still like her doug uh don juan and carmen and everybody else still like her they talk about her like a dog so it is what it is so that's why i'm more inclined to believe portia side but um it's all messy no matter which way you look at it and then people just pulling people out of parties and stuff and candy trying to say she don't want her to be you know escorted out and I was like, who the fuck is this dude that was in the all black who said she had to go and stuff? I said, you feeling yourself a little bit too much, sir. But yeah, which side you believe? It's just a mess. It really is. You know, you can't even go to a fucking party without some drama going on. Always. 
So, um, <clears throat> why did I come on here like that? Anyway, y'all, today is just a crazy day. I just don't know. Forgive me. Forgive me, okay? Just forgive me. Moving on. Um, if you like this episode, really ain't gonna be much until the end when they had a big confrontation. And so, basically, what wound up happening is, um, we got Cynthia... She's um at her house with Mallory and she's talking to Mallory like, damn, I'm up here trying to call Noel and she not answering and she just sending me straight to voicemail. Mallory was like, the girl is in college. She was like, I mean, she only been there for 24 hours. You know, you're not supposed to call your um kids every day. I said, this codependency shit is, girl, let it go. Let her, um, you want her to be independent. Let her live her life for right now. Okay, stop that shit. Move it on. And then she was talking about how Mike Hill's supposed to be coming out there. Y'all was saying in the comments that they broke up. They still together, okay? They are still very much together. But um, anyway, so he's supposed to be coming over. Mallory is like, are you nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous. What you think? I mean, it's been a long time since I seen him. It was like, y'all got the house to y'all. So what y'all going to be doing? <laughs> I mean, we're going to be doing some things, and then we're going to be doing some things. I was like, you know, Cynthia just said, we're going to be fucking all weekend. That's all it is. You know, it is what it is. We grown. Use our words, okay? Use your words, bitch. You know, she was like, when Mike used to come to town, she, he's never came to the house because Noelle was there. So, uh, we know, like, stayed at the house and nothing like that. He stayed at his mom's house. But that ain't the first time, you know, this ain't going to be the first time that they actually fucked each other. So, it's going to probably be the first time that they fucked each other in their house. And then, apparently, Mike's supposed to be um coming over there to ask her something. And she was like, what you think he going to ask me? Like, uh, am he going to get married or something like that? Mallory going to say, he could. He could be saying something about breaking up. Why you getting so... I said, Mallory. Stop it, okay? That's why you're in the predicament which you're in the predicament right now with your husband um, who ain't your husband, separated or whatever, you know. Y'all seen the young little face my life, okay? Moving on from that, she's just nervous. She's, you know, ready for marriage. She said if he was to, because uh, Mallory said, are you going to introduce us to him? Are we going to ever meet him? She said if he popped the right question, yeah, y'all can meet him. If not, no, Okay. And, you know, Cynthia is in her confession of just cheesing. She said she could be corny with guys, which we already know. And she said that um, if he asked her to marry her right then and there, she would say yes. I said, oh, okay. You know, that's how you feel. We're going to let you rock with that. Moving on from that, we see Nene over there with Greg. They getting the spray ready in the house. And then somebody said that they there. It was like, we've been waiting on you pull out. And then who is it? It's Mr. Peter Thomas. I said, oh, so y'all kiki buddies now, okay? You know, Nene had to go through the little history of how they didn't get along at first. They had their little issues, but now they like good girlfriends now. You know what I'm saying? And um, he has gone on you know he's in his own relationship and I feel like this how it should be he shouldn't be concerned about what's really going on with Cynthia and all that shit because he's in his own relationship and he flourishing in that he's worried about his business and that's basically what they were talking about and you know um we get some more information on Greg Greg is doing okay he's going back to the hospital to get the colostomy bag um that he had to have because they took off more a lot of his colon and so in order for the colon to heal they disconnected it from the stomach and all that stuff and put it to a, a colostomy bag so that it can heal up now they're gonna reconnect it back so he won't have the bag anymore and so he's just happy about all of that and when Nene was asking about Mike Hill you watch Mike Hill you know him he a um, sports analyst nah I ain't never heard him y'all might have something in common no I'm pretty sure we don't um, but I feel like he came at, to Cynthia's life at the right time. Do I feel like, um, uh, Peter feels some type of way? No. I truly feel like he's moved on and he truly is happy for Cynthia, you know? And, um, he did throw a little shade. Is it really shade that he said he don't watch Fox News? He watch EF, um, Fox Sports? He watch ESPN? You know, Nene took it as a little shade, but, you know, it could work either way. But other than that, he cool. So, Eva and her husband, or fiancé at the time, Mike, they go over there to Tanya and Paul's house. And, you know, Mike and Paul, they were college uh, friends, okay? They went to Morehouse together. I do like the way they came in. And then Mike was like, 
Um, before uh, we get into this, I want to uh, say I apologize if I ever pinned you in Morehouse and all that, making fun of when Yavana was up there talking about some, you know, I was that bitch in Clark Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is cute. I ain't even gonna lie. So they start, you know, just talking about stuff that happened and then talking about the whole trip to Destin and how, you know, um, Cynthia, not Cynthia, but Tanya, Tanya, whatever her name is, she kind of offended Nene because of the high and the low. And she was like, you know, Louis Vuitton is like this hundred year old plus fashion um, house and then their swag is different. That was a little bit of shade in the confessional, but she was telling the truth. You know, I'm still not sure if she was trying to be shady when she said that at the place, but that's how Nene took it. And so, at this point, you know, uh, Eva started talking about the whole bachelorette party and how Nene wasn't invited and all of that. And so, her whole thing is they're coming up with places that they should go to have another bachelorette party and, you know, try to make up for things. And they was swirling the globe and they was just picking places. And, bitch, they picked Russia. At first. And then they said, no, girl, we ain't finna do that. Then it landed on the water. Then it landed on North Korea. She was like, no, bitch, that's Tokyo right there. Okay, Tokyo. And in that confessional, when, um, what's her name? Eva was like, you know, having two bachelorette parties. And then we finna throw it up and um, tear it up Gangnam style. I said, bitch, that is South Korea. Sky, uh, psych, whatever his name is. He's from South Korea, okay? You know, you got your shit, your, your Asian countries mixed up. At least you still had it in the same vicinity, you know, but that's not the country, boo boo, okay? But she said, We got a, I said, Listen, Tanya, little bougie, okay? Tanya got money. She said, Bitch, we got our own little hibachi room, okay? So we can invite the girls over and have them, you know, have the people dressed up, whatever, to make it seem like we finna go to Tokyo. I said, Okay, you got your own hibachi room? What else are the type of rooms you got? God damn, I want to be you when I grow up, okay? You know, I want to have nice things, nice things, you know? And then they was talking about the designer and stuff, and um, is she going to not wear designers and all that stuff for the whole trip? Girl, they making so much of a big deal out of this. It, it ain't. Did you tell Marlo not to wear designers? Like, come on. Moving on from that, we see um, Cynthia. She's getting ready for Mike to show up. You know, she's taking the uh, salsa out the cup. She's taking the guac off the cup. You know, trying to make it seem like she made the shit when we see that she didn't. And we see Mike pull up. He get out in his Capri joggers. I said, all right, she about to break out some shit going on. You know? And as soon as they opened up the door, when he when she heard the knock on the door, Cynthia was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm coming. And then as soon as she opened up the door, they started kissing and shit. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. That whole scene was cute to me, okay? For some reason, it was cute. You know, I just... Because, you know, I just don't like seeing all the extra shit in the drama that we know that we're going to see. But... To break up the monotony of it, um, you know, you throw in the cute little cute, a couple of cute scenes here and there. And it was a cute little thing to see, you know, Cynthia, this grown ass woman acting all giddy and, you know, like she's in love or whatever with somebody that she's really vibing with. And to see people actually not afraid to show true affection for each other, whether you want to believe it's true or not, you know, to show the affection. They nasty with it. He was like, you remember that counter? What that counter do? It was 30, wasn't it? I said, oh. <laughs> he got the producer. What happened on the um, counter? She said, I got served. <laughs> I said, I bet you the fuck did, bitch. <laughs> you know? And, um, yeah, I like the way you cut that cheese, bitch. I want somebody to talk to me like that. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Like, girl, come on. Come on. Okay, that was cute. And Sne uh, Cynthia already said she's corny with men. So to see the little corniness come out, it was it was cute, okay? He talked about how he still need to um, you know, um, talk to his mom and all this stuff and I guess she hasn't met the mother yet and this is when he's supposed to be asking whatever it is that she needs to ask. I said, Well what the question is, okay? Quit making it such a suspenseful moment. So Shamari and Ronnie they go see a marriage counselor, a pastor, or whatever, and his wife that they've been seeing for I guess the past three years or so. They check in every twice a month twice a month which i honestly feel like there's nothing wrong with that especially once you have problems and issues that you already you know try to overcome and then you need somebody else to you know talk to a therapist or whatever 
Um, some of y'all go to the pastors and counseling and does always help. You know, it's nothing wrong with getting a little counseling here and there. Uh, like Shamari said, uh, unbiased eye or ear or whatever. And so, you know, they just talking about the whole thing, what's going on in their relationship and them traveling a lot and how Shamari can't wait to get back on the road. She wanted to do touring. She, you know, having these kids and stopping her bag a little bit. She wanted to get back out there and make the money that she used to make. But hey, it is what it is. Moving on from that, Portia invited Cynthia, Nene, and Shamia over to the house. And um, Cynthia said it was a much needed break because, you know, Mike is a horny little toe. He over there going to see his mama. And, um, you know, he up there wanting her to cook breakfast and everything, naked and shit. She like, bitch, I just put my clothes back on. So, you know, you're going to have to chill a little bit. But whatever. Um, they get into this whole conversation about what happened at Candy's, uh, uh, and Ty's little party because it's all over the blogs and Portia was saying everybody's calling her, texting her, trying to see what's going on and all this shit. And so we get a little bit more, um, from Portia saying that basically they was turned up at the party. They was having a good time. And then all of a sudden she see one of Candy's workers just circling her. And it was like, who was the worker? It was Jamie. And she had some other chick with her. And, you know, they come over there talking about some Portia has to get out the, um, you know, get out and all this stuff. And this is, she figures that this another person is Sherry, the ex of Dennis, and is putting two to two together. Like, the way that she making it sound like this was a setup, okay? And, and I ain't even gonna say on Candy's part, but it feels as though... Jamie probably took it upon herself to do this shit. And then her workers took it upon themselves to kick her out. And we know this for a fact because Candy had no idea about it. And she even told them that I don't want Portia to be kicked out of an event and stuff like that. Okay. And so at this point, I'm looking like, well, damn, did Candy talk to you yet? That's when Portia was like, you know, I text her, I call her talking about, you know, um, they trying to kick me out the event and all this stuff. And she was like, well, shit, I'm sorry that happened to you and I'll call you later. And she said she never heard from her since. And that's fucked up. And like Cynthia said, if you working for me, you don't kick nobody out of nowhere unless I tell you to. And I would have had to dealt with that, okay? I would deal with you and all of that whole situation. And Cynthia said, bitch, I'm going to talk to her about that. I said, Cynthia, you done got you some good dick and all of a sudden you want to talk to people? Okay, you know, stay in your lane, okay? Just let them work this shit out. But <clears throat> it was a lot. And uh, Cynthia, uh, well, Nene was like, are you sure that it was the... um." Not being told from the upper, the upper echelons of the level of the head that's telling them, the workers, to do this shit like that. Because that's what it seems like it's coming from. I said, oh, don't put that out there. Um, but at this point, you know, Portia is like, let me tell you something. Because when I got home tonight, I was hurting and all this shit. And it was like, hurting? What's going on? She was like, um, she was pregnant. And then Shamia was backing up her story. Mostly, Shamia was saying the story too before Portia can say some stuff so that's why I'm more prone to believe it but anyway um she was like girl I'm gonna tell y'all something I'm pregnant okay and she halfway through her first semester her first trimester so that's when Cynthia was like that's why if she knew that she was already pregnant I just don't feel like she would put herself in this position to get into it with somebody knowing that she's pregnant like that. I said that's true, but then again, this is Portia that I'm talking about. So, you know, you just never know. And so, at this point, they just more so thinking about the kid. And Portia was like, I'm just mad at myself for putting myself in a position where anything can go down like that. Knowing that it's not just about me, but it's about the child too. I was like, oh, okay. I just got some bad news. Oh, shit. Y'all, I don't even feel like finishing this. No, 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 no. I'm not even going to do that right now. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Portia. Okay, so it's, it's, wow, that just took me out. Somebody in my family just committed suicide. I, I'm just crazy. Anyway, um, let me finish this. So, basically, what just happened is, it's Tanya's little party. Eva's over there. They're getting everything ready. And 
Uh, everybody shows up at this point. Everybody's there besides Portia. They already start talking about what happened. Cynthia said, bitch, you was wrong on some shit candy about the whole, you know, not calling her and all this stuff. That's what Nene said. Nene acting like she don't remember what Portia said. She just said that you didn't call her and all this stuff and shit was said, you know. And so Candy reiterating the story as if, you know, she was actually there and not just saying the words of her employees and all that stuff. And she, you know, trying to make it seem like Oh my god. Um <laughs> This is fucking crazy. God damn. I am so sorry, y'all. Uh I gotta deal with some shit when I finish with this, so just get just hanging out with me for right now. Um if you see me looking at my I'm getting the information as I'm going. But anyway, so she just taking the information and reiterating what her factory workers told her. That's basically what it is. And she making it sound as if she actually witnessed everything that happened. And, you know, I guess we're taking it from from Candy perspective. She's more entitled to believe her her um workers because of Portia's past and how, you know, she has been aggressive and things like that. And so, at this point, when Portia comes in, Candy is looking like, uh, and then, you know, Portia goes over there. She gives a hug to Nene. She gives a hug to Tanya. Tanya asks him, do you want something to drink? And she was like, nah, girl, I'm good. I'm just hungry. She goes, gives a hug to everybody. She bypasses, you know, Candy and just sits right down. Candy looking like, hmm. And I was just like, girl, please. Shamari said she got to the party late, okay? And by that time, um, Portia probably was gone. And she just wished she would have saw uh, Portia get kicked out. I was like, what the fuck is going on? But, yeah, but, yeah. So, basically, you know, they get into the whole conversation about what went down. And Portia said she was just, you know, trying to see what's happening. Because when she wakes up, everybody got the blogs coming at her and all this stuff. Candy, like... Uh, you trying to say that I'm the one that sent the stuff to the blog. She was like, no, that's not what I'm saying. But then Candy was irking me because she's once again reiterating and doing all this stuff as if she actually saw everything that went down. You're literally taking word of mouth from people that don't fuck with Portia. Okay. So you're, that's why she's more prone to believe them because I'm her friends or whatever. But you should also factor in that you know that these people don't like this girl. So, it's just irritating me. And at this point in time, you know, like Cynthia said, girl, she pregnant. Candy don't know that she pregnant, but Portia needs to calm down a little bit. And she was like, bitch, you always the aggressive. You always doing this. And if you wasn't the aggressive, why'd you get kicked out? She was like, I was wrongfully kicked out and all this shit. Um, just like when y'all told her to go that last time at that party, she didn't do, do was it Kenya or somebody told her to leave? Portia just left, okay? She was kicked out, but she wasn't the aggressor. She just came and she left. That's what it is. So how we know that how do we know any of them is telling the truth? Okay. Where's the footage and all that shit? And um basically at one point Portia said you fake. That's why she unfollowed her, deleted her picture. She said, You phony, you fake. Eva trying to say the lines of communication so ain't effective. The next thing you know, Portia called Candy a bitch. Candy said, Who the fuck you calling a bitch? And she was like, I'm calling you a bitch. And she was like, On that note, I'm about to leave. And she was like, There you go, don't leave, don't do this. And whoop de woo. And they going back and forth at each other. And um, to be continued. I said, Okay. But um, I apologize that I had to rush through this last ending of this review. I just got to go handle some shit and see what's going on. But um, y'all have a good night. I'll see y'all later. Peace.